Hello everybody, I'm Samya Murthy. I'm making this video on trends in agricultural growth and agricultural productivity. This is a topic under agricultural economics. I hope it will be beneficial to the students who will be studying agricultural economics. So when we look into the agricultural sector, how it has changed or evolved or grown, we will see that this is one of the important uh, contributor to India's GDP. This is mainly because we all know that our country is mainly dependent on agriculture for our livelihood, for this as an occupation and also providing us with food. So the growth rate of India's uh, GDP is mainly based on or it's mainly from agricultural sector. So earlier we know that uh, pre-independence era before the colonization happening, India was well sufficient, all the villages were self-sufficient and we didn't have to depend on anybody to come and provide food grains or whatever was the necessity of that particular village. But with colonization happening, when we lost uh, our independence and uh, when British tried to impose things and things changed. So later on we find that agriculture still was predominant in India and trying to be the main contributor to the Indian economy. So recently when we check our statistics, uh, our economic survey shows us that agricultural sector in 2020-21 has contributed to uh, the GDP by around 19.9%. So roughly around 20% of uh, GDP has come from agriculture. Again, the government of India has placed special emphasis on this sector and in its five-year plans, we have seen that a lot of importance has been given to this particular sector. And we all know about Green Revolution, how it changed uh, the face of Indian agriculture, how we changed uh, from making you know, excess and ore production of wheat. So there was a, this was a major boost to the agricultural sectors in India. So let's see the different products uh, that are grown in India. I'm just trying to uh, discuss few, not covering the entire thing. So let's begin with the major projects, uh, major pro products like uh, rice. Rice, as we all know, is one of the major food crops grown in India. And this we find is produced both in the uh, Kharif season and the Rabi season. So basically it's uh, done in both the seasons. However, the share of rice production in the season of Rabi is little less. So rice is considered as a diverse crop which can be grown in diverse climate and soil condition. So the growth rate of rice production has been fluctuating and one of the reasons for this decline is the introduction of green revolution which brought in a shift in terms of production to wheat instead of rice. So we all know how a huge tremendous output of wheat was brought in through green revolution so most of the people carried away or the farmers thought it would be very beneficial if they shift from growing rice to wheat so they could make a lot of money and also have a huge production. So we look into the next uh, agricultural crop that we have that is wheat and we all know India is the second largest producer of wheat. And wheat is considered to be the staple food for majority of the Indian states. However, the rapid increase in production after 1965, which was the first phase of Green Revolution, this was, you know, a huge, tremendous uh, production that we have seen with much developed seeds, new methods of production, new equipment and technology. So we are all very familiar with the high yielding variety seeds, 
you know, proper irrigation, water supply, and all this, you know, channelize the uh, uh, production of wheat, which was much advantage to the farmers. Moving on to jowar, we know that this is considered as a staple diet, especially for low income families in India. So apart from that, uh, that this can be used to feed animals or used as a raw material to various industries. So since the beginning of 21st century, the total agricultural yield of jowar has been continuously declining. The main reason behind this decline is because the total cultivable area for jowar has been on the decline. So similarly, the shift in production from the traditional product to modern commercial crops. So when we're discussing the crop pattern, we have seen that people move from uh, agricultural produce or food crops to cash crops because people felt that they could easily make money or there was these products that was in huge demand in the market. So this again was one of the reasons why we see there is a depletion of the produce. So let's look into the trends in agricultural growth. Uh, raising the production of food grains, we see India has been experiencing the increase in the production of food grains particularly after the introduction of new agricultural strategy, that is the Green Revolution, in agricultural practices. So the hallmark of Green Revolution has enabled India to become self-sufficient in food grains and even a mar marginal exporter. So as we know, we were dependent uh, on other countries to provide us with uh, wheat and uh, rice or not even having enough sufficient sugar. But now we are able to produce wheat, rice and sugar cane, wherein we are the second largest producers of these products. So instead of uh, getting it from the foreign countries, we are able to now produce and export it to other countries. So let's see the diversification of agriculture. Agriculture is not only meeting the demand for food grains, but also other needs of development. So in recent years, we see agricultural sector has been diversified to produce commercial crops, horticultural crops, that is we have production of fruits, we have vegetables, spices, cashew, areca nut, coconut. You know, we also have floricultural products like flowers, orchids, you know, we have dairy and other animal husbandry products. So it's, you know, we not just dependent on agriculture, we have diversified into various allied activities. So now uh, the farmer who was more dependent on agriculture or was only dependent on agriculture now has his diversification happening when he is moved to the commercial crops and other activities like animal husbandry or horticulture or maybe even floriculture. This has been a very advantageous to the Indian farmers. So we see the increasing trends in horticultural output. Uh, the diversity of climate and soil characteristics is enabling India to grow a large variety of horticultural crops. So we have fruits, we have vegetables, spices, cashew nut, cocoa, coconut, areca nut, medicinal plants, you know, aromatic plants. So there's a huge demand for these products. So when there is a demand for this, the farmer is also, you know, in a positive note, try to produce these products and sell in the market. Then we also see that India is one of the largest producer of fruits and second largest producer of vegetables as well. So moving on to floricultural output, uh, commercial farming of floricultural activities has been increasing and uh, the demand for Indian cut flour is again increasing in the international market. We know 
ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ತಮಿಳುನಾಡು ಆಂಧ್ರ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ದೇರ್ಸ್ ಅ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ ಡಿಮಾಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದೇರ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ದ ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ we all know there were certain restrictions prior to you know, liberalization since we have a new uh, economic policy and liberalization has removed all the restrictions on the movement of agricultural produce within the country and this has facilitated expansion of trade in agricultural products especially food grains and coming to the exports of the agricultural products agriculture being a very important contributor the volume of exports is also increasing and we find that india is well placed in respect of agricultural exports the agricultural sector is subjected to low import content we have low cost of labor favorable climatic conditions and low unit cost of inputs so most of the restrictions that was there on agricultural exports has been removed so now the items on the restricted lists have been drastically pruned and only very few one or two items are there which are subject to licensing or you know the quantity of ceiling on how much you can export and as we all know as we have discussed earlier also rice and wheat are the emerging as a major export product so we know we are the second largest producers of wheat rice sugarcane and we are also exporting rice and wheat and there is a huge demand for our products in the international markets so moving on to food processing and this is uh, you know one activity that is in huge demand there is you know development and expansion happening of food processing industries in india we all know fruits and vegetables are very delicate they are perishable in nature and when you don't store it properly or can't make use of it properly a major uh food loss is happening or there is a huge loss or wastage happening so to prevent such kind of loss or wastage the national horticulture board is now making necessary step to provide infrastructure and for proper packaging and storage and transportation for these horticultural products because with a lot of effort you have grown and produced so much you have harvested good lot of products now we are not able to store it or not able to pack it or not able to transport it you know is causing a huge loss or wastage so this is what is being looked into and the production of the processed fruits and vegetables are providing huge number of employment and improving agricultural productivity by raising the prospects of agricultural exports so the government is also making uh, necessary incentives or providing necessary incentives making necessary changes to help these industries and they are also exempting certain excise duties now we see there is rising productivity of agricultural resources so one of the important aim that we see is to attain higher productivity of resources utilized for agriculture so the improvement in the productivity of resources is being done through better allocation of resources between different areas and also with the application of latest technology so they are providing technology they are also providing different resources trying to bring in improvement in terms of agricultural productivity so developing agriculture in the backward areas so we have certain backward areas where there is no irrigation system dry land farming has been initiated and other activities like you know we discuss the allied activities like horticulture floriculture animal husbandry fishery etc have all been encouraged in these areas and application of modern improved techniques in these areas 
has also resulted in the development of many backward areas which were previously you know subject to widespread of poverty now developing new biological techniques you know there is increasing demand for food and there are certain natural resources have still not been utilized and you know there is a huge demand uh, created from the agricultural sector and we don't want to harm the environment to save and protect the environment as well the agricultural sector should not cause any further damage so with this in mind increasing use of biological technology for agricultural operations has been emphasized and more emphasis has been given to develop new biological technologies so we know we didn't have these technologies being used in farming or crops or in agricultural fields so which are being brought into to protect one the environment to save any damages being done to the soil or to the crops <clears throat> so growing trend of uh, unemployment in agricultural sector and solutions for that we see that there is a growing trend in agricultural exports there is a increased demand for horticulture animal products in the export market and this has created ample opportunities and scope for employment of huge number of population so we know providing employment is a challenge to the government so these sectors are actually providing employment to the youth and this allied sector being labor intensive can provide a lasting solution to the rural unemployment problem of the country so it's not just the urban areas we are touching we are also talking about the rural unemployment where this is able to provide employment now the growing trend uh, trends of investment in agriculture we see that agricultural sector is experiencing a growing trend in the volume of investments you know the post liberalization period we see there's huge investment coming both the volume of public sector investment in the agricultural sector is in, uh, is declining there are various venture capitalists and others investing in agriculture so institutionalization of agricultural credit there is a growing trend of institutionalization of agricultural credit in the initial stage of post independence period farmers were depending too much on the unorganized sources of agricultural sector that is they want these uh, you know landlords or these traders or these money lenders to give them credit they would take loan for a high rate of interest and would be exploited by them but now all these non institutional uh, people who would provide uh, credit or creating harm to the farmers uh, have been uh, put at a you know uh, who have been uh, sidelined and we find that the commercial banks cooperatives regional rural banks providing loans to our farmers and when we see the volume of subsidy that has come to agriculture again there is a huge change in respect of the subsidies given to agricultural facilities like fertilizers irrigation electric chargers etc they have been uh, increasing amount of money given to them so let's summarize as to what we have uh, studied in these uh, uh, video we just discussed about the various agricultural products that are grown in india so we discussed about maybe rice wheat jowar we discussed about uh, the growing trends that is happening in agriculture so how things have changed uh, for agriculture whether it's in terms of credit or in terms of production or in terms of diversification in terms of export providing employment etc it gave me immense pleasure to prepare this video for my students who would be studying agricultural economics thank you